welcome to this week's edition of the Jody Bunting podcast. Now, today we have a special guest who not only is my former manager, she is my friend, but she's also the sensation of Pilates and menopause world in Derby. It's Susan Boo. Hello. Hi, Jody. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm really excited about this. Um, Jody and I did a podcast with someone else recently and we were just uh, literally taking over the podcast so we just feel like you know this is going to be a real chat together and I've known Jodie for wow it must be 20 years is it yeah. 20 years it's got to be 20 years we won't give our ages away but we're very close in age um and uh you know he's been a really highlight of Derby fitness and well-being so yeah he used to uh, work alongside me. I don't want to say yeah, I was your manager, Jody. Uh, you, you know, were, though. <laughs> so, well, give you a little story about what happened there. I was the Rosemary Connolly Diamond Fitness uh, franchisee for the Derby area back in 19, oh, 2001, that was. And um, I had numerous classes and people working for me. And, and Jody came along and did one of my classes for me there. So he is obviously the guru of weight loss, <laughs> having lost so much weight uh, uh, that time and being, um, you know, a celebrity in Derby. <laughs> so micro a celebrity. Good, micro celebrity. That's a good word of it. Yeah, great. What did you think to the Rosemary Connolly franchise, Jodie? Let's have a, I'm going to interview you back now. <laughs> well, you know what? It was weird because it was my first experience of, because obviously I'd got into fitness and teaching classes that way, and I'd gone along to Slimming World, Weight Watchers, whatever, as a client, but I'd never actually taught it. So you actually were the start of my real journey and my real path in life because obviously i went to the rosemary Connolly training and obviously i was guided by you as well so i have to give you big thanks susan oh, oh well thank you that's no problem um the rosemary Connolly days by the way were very very successful a lot of people came to those classes and they were really successful and the rosemary Connolly, as an organization for training was very thorough at, at the time Obviously, we're early days of the internet then, so we didn't have as much exposure to the stuff we can have now. So I feel like a lot of people have more um, personal interest in health and fitness now because the information is available. Um, in the Rosemary days, it wasn't as available. So let's talk yeah. about low fat, Jodie, because I know we want to talk about that, don't we? We're kicking straight off into this because um, I'm from the days of um, diet clubs. I'm going to go yeah. like that because I was going to say diet clubs. Um, and diet clubs and low fat and fads and being on a diet and then off the diet and all that kind of thing. So the Rosemary Connolly diet was a low fat rule and then you were to eat anything that was under 4% fat on that product. Yeah. Um, like I say, we were going with the information that we had at the time. What do you think, Jodie, to that? Well, you see, it was all about calories then, wasn't it? I know a lot of personal trainers and stuff like that is all about calories still. But if you focus on the calories, it almost sends you down that landmine of low fat, which is just so wrong. And, you know, I've learned through the years of my own health, you know, actually having some good fats, even some saturated fats. You know, it is good to have a little bit of unsaturated uh, fat, which a lot of people steer clear from uh, purely because of your skin, your hair, I know I can't really say that, but your hair, your nails, you know, your body really does need that fat. And although a low fat diet may work temporarily, I think you'll probably agree with that, long term, you definitely need to get some fat in your diet, preferably, of course, the unsaturated healthy fat. Yes, uh, absolutely. And this is where, so um, in 2014, I was there with the Rosemary Connolly franchise for 15 years and it was successful, like I say, but during, towards the end of that time, I, I left in 2014 because Rosemary Connolly uh, as a business went bankrupt. And so we were left with our clients. Now at that time, a lot of my clients had sort of grown up with me, if you like, and they were all approaching menopause. So to 45 plus, and these ladies had come along and all these years, this low fat diet was suiting them amazingly. And when they hit the menopause, it really didn't. And I, I was like, gosh, what's happened? Rosemary Conley didn't have any answers, by the way. And so I had to find out my own answers. So this yeah. is then took me down this educational journey, did many courses, read lots of books before the menopause frenzy that we have today in the media. <laughs> 
And so, um, yeah, I went, went away and I found out what, what was the story, what the hell was going on and why, how can we help ourselves health, fitness, nutrition wise and well-being. Um, not going down the route of HRT myself, that was. Um, so yeah, um, that's what really started me on this journey to focus my clients now on the peri to postmenopausal time of their life. So that brings us on to our first question. Isn't it, Jody? Sorry, I'm leading you here. No, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> so this <laughs> this podcast, not only is it a chat between me and Susan, but it's also about just menopause because I have a lot of clients, and as you said, it's like the big topic at the moment. So, you know, what is menopause? As from a man, I'm saying that who yeah, doesn't know absolutely. anything. Yeah, no, you know what? Uh, men definitely need to know about it. So I think yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's an area of that. So menopause is the time uh, explained for the run up to your last period ever in your life so your body ovulates to a certain length of time and then it doesn't and then that your periods stop you stop ovulating and therefore you're not fertile now i think a lot of women know all about that but what do they do they know about all the different symptoms around that menopause time and i didn't myself and this obviously led me to because i was running through the menopause myself at the time when i was doing the training and it opened up a whole new information there which was incredible to learning that there's 34 different symptoms that you can have at any one time now many women are thinking that it's just about their periods getting erratic and um, also hot flushes they might know about those but there's so many others and some of the ones that are un interesting are the ones that actually affect your brain now this links in with the fat thing because your brain needs fat it needs fat it actually feeds on it so if you are on a low fat diet you are maybe going to exacerbate those parts of the symptoms which is depression anxiety um, feeling of rage feeling of um, worthlessness and all those kind of feelings are start, you know, start to become much more um, relevant in your life and it becomes a bigger thing. And I think a lot of women didn't know this and we didn't, I didn't know of it. Um, but um, over the last few years, the uh, Menopause Awareness Month, which is October, you may have just gone through it, you know, watched it on the media. It's just everywhere isn't it and Davina McCall has got in on the act she did a marvelous program all about this the anxiety side of menopause and how it can really knock your confidence and I've seen over the years now looking back over those rosemary years a lot of my ladies did you know they came as confident women in the 30s and then in 45 something happened and it was you know that a lot of them would blame other things and they're feeling angrier and that don't know why and all that kind of thing we didn't really put two and two together so i think there's a lot of symptoms there if you learn about them it's incredibly like well that's menopause that's what's happening to me um some women are in denial unfortunately that they're never going to go through it but actually every woman will go through it at some point in their life now there's quite a swathe of women now coming on tiktok if you go on tiktok and put in hashtag menopause you've got everybody's story which is very useful actually but yeah. there's a lot of women, women are going through it very early in their lives. So early onset menopause is a big thing. If you've lost your ovaries, you've had a hysterectomy and your ovaries have gone away, you are plunged into menopause, like falling off a cliff. And these symptoms can be debilitating. Um, also, if you've had breast cancer and you've gone through chemotherapy, you are also still, again, plunged into menopause. A bring you into early menopause it does yes absolutely and then it's very difficult for you to get hold of any hrt so replacement therapy because um obviously that can be stimulating for um the cancer cells now let's just go on to that because i want to cover that bit because yeah. over the years i think it was 2008 there was a study done um which um looked at women and then came to the conclusion that HRT was really bad for you and that it would make you have cancer. And um, lots of women the next day just stopped taking their medication and then were plunged into all of these symptoms that they had before. That's why they went on the meds to start with. And yeah. everyone was scared to death with menopause. Now this was the combined pill. So the pill has the estrogen and the progesterone in. Yeah. Now, I'm not a doctor by the way. Can I just put that down there? <laughs> 
just small print. Obviously, always talk to your GP or there's lots and lots of GPs now on Instagram and TikTok that will tell you all the information in depth. I'm just covering it generally before we go on to the fitness and health bit. But this combined pill was the one that was more at risk, they said. So um, over the years, lots of women then didn't go on it. Lots of women got osteoporosis. Lots of women were dying of heart disease. Lots of women were getting Alzheimer's and dementia. We'll come on to that in a minute. Not that you can put two and two together, but there's a general feeling of that. Yeah. People were fearful of it. Lots of people quite possessive over not being on it and all that kind of thing. It's quite a weird time. But then over the years, they've developed new uh, forms of HRT, which are much safer and they're topical. So they actually go onto your skin. So a patch or a, sh a spray or a gel. And also you can take a, just a, a tablet for the progesterone on its own there. So that's a much safer way of taking it. Now, over the years, I think it's like last year, the people that did the study had to apologize because when they looked into the detail of that study in 2008, they'd done the study on ladies that were over 65. So they were in the postmenopausal years anyway. They were more at risk of all these things anyway. Yeah. And actually the study was thrown out. So it's a really Great. big thing there. And it's really important that people haven't heard that bit of it. All they've heard is the study's bad and yeah. it's really bad to have HRT. So just, I wanted to put that out there because I think it's something that we're not hearing enough of. Now, um, moving now on to the lifestyle and things that you can do for yourself. So um, when I went for the menopause, I was also fearful of HRT. I was in those years and um, I was thinking, I don't want to go on. No, I'm, not gonna, I'm going to do all the health and fitness things. And you know what? We should be doing these health and fitness things anyway. Yeah. All of ladies and gents. Lady, I only do ladies, obviously. Um, <laughs> ladies, from 30 onwards, your body is already in decline anyway in every every system in the body so we're aging as we as we move through our life as we know and you are going to be deficient of some of hormones anyway so these things uh tips and tricks are good for everyone i'm sure jody will uh you know vow yeah. for the things that i'm going to be talking about anyway so you need to be really looking at making sure that you're fit and healthy because after menopause now the postmenopausal woman which is after menopause. So generally the age that you might be going through menopause in the UK at the moment, the average age is 51. So okay. 51, you have your period, that's it. And then you're classed as a postmenopausal woman. Now I think those postmenopausal women are the forgotten women because- Yeah, so these are the forgotten ladies of the society. Women. We don't want to forget them because they're amazing women. And I've got lots and lots of postmenopausal women in my, classes and when i started to talk about menopause they go oh i've been through that i'm all right now that's fine I, oh i sailed through that it's fine i don't need to think about it but actually if you think about it you actually uh, the term postmenopausal needs to be thrown out because we are menopausal from the time that you stop your period until the time that you die okay see i didn't understand that yes exactly it's another thing i feel not people aren't understanding it because you are going to be deficient in those uh, sex hormones, progesterone and estrogen for the rest of your life then. You're deficient yeah. in them. Whether you take out HRT or not, you still are gonna be deficient in the way that your body creates them. You're not gonna be creating them. In fact, the estrogen comes from your adrenal glands. It doesn't come from your ovaries anymore. It's a different estrogen anyway. So your body system, now if you think about hormones, sorry, Jodie, do you want to jump in at any point? Cause I start uh, on the going. Stop. Go, go, go. <laughs> so what you think about hormones, they're like little signals to your brain to do something into the cell. And they're like little um, uh, postmen. They're taking these things around and opening cells and doing things. So if you think some of those are going to be in serious decline, then other hormones are going to be affected. They work, work like an orchestra and they need yeah. to sing together. So if you've got your estrogen and your progesterone decline severely, then other hormones start to rise up. And these generally tend to be cortisol, which yeah. is your um, stress hormone. And that's where that rage comes from where you don't even know i've never been an angry person and suddenly i hate everybody menopause menopause rage eh? 
honestly, it really is a thing. Um, and if you find that you're getting angry in the car, that's the first sign I noticed. But, um, you know, snapping at your, your partner. And this is cortisol. It's, you're far more reactive towards cortisol. And that yeah. is my first point I really want to make. Now, cortisol works very closely with insulin, which is your sugar-lowering hormone. So those two are in a right turmoil for the yeah. rest of your life. That's, I just need to just say it again. So from the last time that you have a period to the time that you die, the cortisol and the insulin are far more reactive in your body. And so they're sensitive. They can be underactive, overactive at different times. Because it's, And that should be the main thing that we need to focus on, the leveling out or the, the managing of our stress levels and the management of our blood sugar. Amazing. That's it. And so just going back to HRT, if somebody didn't want to take it or basically your advice, do you think everyone should take it? You know, what's the balance with it, HRT? I'm not a doctor, so I can't really comment. However, yeah. <laughs> in my opinion, I feel that in the future that everyone will be given the offer of it. Yeah. Um, obviously, looking at their health, uh, risks uh, closely so if they've had cancer that's a, a difficult um so if anybody has had cancer or they've gone through you know they've got um any strong risks factors um then they will be hopefully offered at the gp health and fitness things that they can do so that's where we step in me yeah. and Jodie are we are special we specialize in health fitness and well-being we're not just fitness uh, professionals we look at the whole picture. We are nutritionally trained. So we can, foods can help you, for instance. So the blood sugar leveling, I know you talk about that a lot, Jodie, because yeah. I know you're diabetic. So it's very similar to a, an anti-diabetic diet. Yeah. So we're looking at good proteins, good pro proteins at every single meal. And for a woman that's postmenopausal or menopausal and beyond, as I like to call it, um, you know, she should be looking at 20 to 30 grams of protein each meal every single meal now i feel in the uk generally if you look at the stats the levels of protein that people eat is higher than the rest of the world however um, if you look at what women eat it's lower it's lower not from the, the rest of the world but lower than men lower and generally yeah. women of our age they go on a diet and then they knock all the protein out and they think they're doing a good thing do you agree with that? Do you see that a lot in your Yeah, diet? because again, it goes back to the calories. They're just trying to have the lowest calorie thing possible. Absolutely. So we don't think about calories when I'm I'm training ladies through this time. What I'm thinking is foods that are going to make you feel satisfied. Yeah. They're going to make you feel fuller and you're going to get your energy, your hunger and your um, uh, hunger, energy. And what was the other thing? I can't remember the three things. Okay. Uh, hunger, energy, and cravings under control. Yeah. I call it the heck check. So we're always looking at what hunger, what's your hunger like before you eat a meal, and then you eat the meal. So, for, for instance, for breakfast, you could have a scrambled egg uh, with smoked salmon and an avocado and some spinach on the side. For instance, you eat that meal, and then you score yourself with what you what your hunger feels like afterwards, and then you review how you feel throughout the morning. So are you high on energy? Does your brain feel like it's functioning well? You know, do you feel like you're not sleepy and you're feeling energetic? And then are you craving? When's the first time that you crave throughout that morning? So a lot of people get into habits with food eating, as we know. Um, I've seen that many times over the years and I'm sure you feel the same. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that 11 o'clock coffee and a biscuit keeps coming back so when you eat sugar i know jody will be talking about this a lot when you eat sugar your insulin levels have to put really uh, spike to pull the sugar levels away from the body and if it does that too often you then become diabetic there's yeah. no easier way to say it so we don't want that to hands happen. up to that <laughs> yeah so we want to keep those levels so the things to do is high protein meals with good vegetable content. So we want a good lot of vegetable on the side, good lot of protein. Now where carbohydrates are concerned, the white ones are our gremlins. So if you think about it, in fact, try it for yourself. Have loads of bread one day, potatoes and pasta and rice, and see how you feel. 
and see how it, it, you deal with it. Yeah. Now, generally, I'm generalizing here because now we work with clients. We realize that everybody is different. That's different to the Slimming Club days. Do you yeah. agree with that, Jodie? Absolutely. So, so not one one size fits all at all you're now looking at an individual client and you're getting her to look at her hunger energy and cravings how she feels what her weight loss is like now i've I've taken all this time to come to that weight loss because in my world we are looking at symptom um management more than weight loss now weight loss becomes a side effect of that so you then do lose weight because you do all of these things but it's not the main aim and not the main focus as well. Yeah. However, coming on to that is over the years, because my clients have come from the Rosemary Connolly days, because they're like 60, 70 plus, where they're still in that, I need to lose weight. And I need to lose weight and I'm not going to eat much and I'm going to exercise loads. Yeah. Do you agree? You see that a lot, Jodie. Absolutely. They're literally just burning themselves out, basically. Absolutely. So if you over-exercise and under-eat, you actually spike that cortisol. So you're going to stress your body and mind and then the insulin's going to kick in and then you it doesn't work. You don't lose weight. You actually can gain weight. So if your body is stressed, you're going to gain weight and you're going to get that tie around your belly because that's what the belly fat comes and yeah. menopause. Yeah. <clears throat> and I hear it over and over. Ladies, well, why am I gaining weight around my waist? I don't understand it. And it's to do with this insulin and the cortisol levels. So, yeah, many clients come to me because they want to lose weight, definitely. But I don't focus on that. We focus on feeling satisfied. We don't count calories. We look at foods that will fit into their lifestyle and how they like and if they like the food and how it reacts to their body. So it's a long process. It's much harder than just giving a book over like we did in Rosemary Days. Yeah. Follow this, off you go. See you next week. Uh, <laughs> so tell us about your personal experience. How did you get through menopause without HRT? So I, t- I tried this for five years and I did all of these things. And my symptoms were less so what i do is i I give everyone a symptom checker so there's a little list of things and you can check off what you're feeling at that particular time now because your hormones are very erratic from one month you can feel one thing and the next month you'll feel something totally different you know so oh i was tracking that all the time thinking i'm doing all right here i'm doing okay um gained a little bit of weight but not too much that i couldn't manage my own way in doing those things um but the one main symptom for me was migraines and these weren't going away and yeah. they would keep coming and they were coming every two weeks and the migraine would last for two days i'd be out of work i couldn't do anything you just lie down and so in the end i went to the gp and i felt guilty which is a the wrong feeling but it did it was definitely there I felt guilty. Um, why can't I do this myself? Um, but in the end, uh, the GP said, look, you know what? If you go on these estrogen patches and the progesterone tablets, then you will it will alleviate your migraines. So, and you know what? It did it immediately. Now, wow. at the same time, I was having hot flushes, but I was managing them. They weren't severe. And yeah. I thought, you know, I do, but you know what? The hot flushes went immediately. Did immediately, they? like within days, the hot flushes had gone. Um, I was getting them at night a lot, not not severe. I could manage them, but I was amazed. I also, uh, I actually took a before and after picture of my face. Now this is very vain, but I look <laughs> so haggard. I mean, I don't know if I look haggard now. You might. No, not at all. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can have a look. But um, <laughs> yeah, I actually took a before and after picture. Oh my gosh, there was a, an absolute fit, a change because your sleep gets much better when you start taking HRT, if you if sleep is an issue for you, again, yeah. I wasn't aware that it was an issue for me because these symptoms can be gradual and you're kind of going along and actually there's not one thing that you could go to the doctors for. It's kind of a niggle. Your joints start aching a bit. Oh, you, you'll be all right. Just do some more exercise kind of thing. And you're okay for a bit. So you're not, it's are like niggly symptoms. You don't realize when they've gone, like, oh my God, my body feels okay and I'm sleeping better. And I look better. My skin feels better. My hair's better. It is. It obviously is. It is replacing. That's why they're called hormone replacement uh, therapy. Yeah. Because it is replacing the hormone. But I still believe that it isn't the golden bullet. Well, this I is what really I was going to say. 
Have yeah. you learnt now what you could have done instead of taking those patches? I already knew, uh, but what was happening with me is one of my symptoms was over overdoing it. But you can, you can definitely manage it. I, yeah. My symptoms weren't severe um, and I could have managed it, but that one symptom was just absolutely debilitating. So I had to do something about it. Um, some um, Last month I had, I had ran out of my treatment and um, I had to go for a few days without and a migraine immediately came back. So, wow, you know, unbelievable. Sure. Yeah. Now, another point is that a lot of people think once they've been through the menopause, they can come off the HRT and then that's it. Now, now new research was coming out of America is that actually HRT is extremely good for helping women to defend, fend off Alzheimer's and dementia. Now it's early days, they're in yeah. early days, studies, but the, the results are coming out really good that the HRT is helping that element because it's the brain that changes because the hormone, your brain needs all these hormones. So it's a thing. Um, so that is a thing. Now they're saying that you can go on HRT for the rest of your life, as long as you haven't got lots of risk um, elsewhere in your family and your body. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I will definitely wrestle my GP to the ground if he says I can't go, can't continue with it. Because initially they said just 10 years, go on it for 10 years. So that's a, a good point. Now, again, I still believe, you know, I, I look always at my health and fitness. I'm uh, very into walking. It's a very good uh, exercise when you're menopausal because you're out in nature it's helping you to control your stress management and yeah. stress management is the number one thing um so when it comes to exercise less is more okay and it's about managing your stress around exercise because exercise is actually a stress to the body yeah and i think again we've come through this school of oh keep exercise exercise every day do it do it hard do it fast do it. you know we're back in the 80s when you were doing those high impact aerobics classes <laughs> my, my knees have, have had it now um yeah you know that isn't all good anymore so what we look at is stress management exercise uh ways so things like walking swimming's lovely and they will raise your heart rate a little bit but not too severely and you can go out for long lengths of time and have a nice and uh, breathing's a really good one i class breathing as an exercise now because that manages my stress and the other thing is we need to be looking at our muscle mass so this is now i'm moving on now because another element of my business is looking into longevity and then fending off that Alzheimer's and dementia, which is the biggest fear in most women. Um, and women are more likely to get it. That's another thing in the studies, yeah. uh, the higher risk. Um, so, you know, exercise should be looking at, you know, managing that. But your muscle mass declines rapidly um, over the, it's like can be up to 10% a year unless you keep maintaining that muscle mass. So. In my classes, we work with strength training a lot. So every single week we do a strength training class um, and I definitely uh, make sure that's a priority over even any cardiovascular exercise. Yes. This is the new thing. So definitely walking, strength training. So that will help with your muscle mass. It also helps with another thing that you're high risk of after menopause, which is osteoporosis which is your bone density. So your bones become a spongier because the estrogen has gone away from your body. And so we need to keep the stress on those joints, which weight training does, body weight training also does, yoga, Pilates, that kind of thing, where you're actually putting weight through your body, your own body weight. And then you can get those, keep those bones dense because we don't want you break, falling over and breaking the bone because that's, you know, we don't want that, do we? No, not at all. So uh, three areas of fitness, really, if you can focus on anything that will lower your stress levels. So walking, swimming, that kind of thing is really good, especially out in nature. Second one is your strength training. So yoga, Pilates, weight bearing exercise, weights, kettlebells, um, resistance bands, brilliant. In the gym, if you can. And the third one is for your heart health. So we're still the biggest killer for women in the UK is heart disease. So we want to make sure that heart muscle is really strong and healthy. So HIT classes is where it's at. Now, if you do HIT classes and you can't do them, so for instance, there is a very well-known 
fitness professional on in, uh, on YouTube <laughs> that does lots, and he did in COVID. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Um, some of his exercises are just too hard for ladies of the age group um, because your joints are far more at risk, and I have lots of ladies with hips, shoulders, knees issues. So my hit classes are low impact but high intensity on your heart. So that's where I focus really, those three areas. So a lot of people associate high impact with stars and jumping. So how do you make something high intensity but not high impact? Uh, well, we add in, um, we can add in hand weights. So um, add the intensity through hand weights and make it really easy and fast movement. But arm patterns is where it's at. This is where, back to the Rosemary days, we did this all the time. <laughs> Big arm patterns, low leg lines. Um, and you can do that and there's there'll be no star jumps in my classes. There's hardly any lunges or squats because I have knee issues. I actually need two new knees. Um, my other end is uh, Pilates is my focus because when I learned how to do Pilates and when I taught Pilates, it's like the amazing uh, class which helps you to manage your stress because it's all about the breathing. And secondly, it helps your joints to go through the full range of its actual ability to move. And that again, through longevity till the rest of your life, that I feel like that's a good combo. I was gonna say, because you know, you are running a menopause business and there is exercise, nutrition and lifestyle. So why do you focus on, on Pilates and fitness rather than the other two? Okay, well, I do touch on the nutrition. We do every now and again, we do focus weeks and then we will talk about the food and uh, what you're putting in your mouth. Um, and lots of ladies want to lose weight. So we do a little bit of that. But you know what? There's so much information out there. Everyone's talking about menopause, but nobody's actually showing you how to actually do it. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to show you how to do it and give you the right recipe for you. Uh, the recipe being the different types of exercise and the intensity that you need to do it and the rest bits as well and this is where you're at so we're actually the solution to the divine what divine is talking about what she's saying what's all these people on the line are talking about you come to me and i'll actually get you to do it yeah <laughs> so uh, that's a big thing putting it into action it's all right knowing this stuff but let's put it into action so the easiest way is to start to move the body and then you start to become more positive and then your sleep improves, which is a big one for menopause. And then you feel more able to want to eat the right foods. And it goes in that sort of route. Yeah. Whereas before you'd be focusing on the foods, but you didn't, when you're menopausal, you're so angry with yourself. You can't sleep, you're tired <laughs> out. It's the last thing you want to do is like go, oh, right, I'll have a protein shake for breakfast. You don't want that. So I go the other route and go exercise, calm yourself down. Let's get into an nice pattern of exercise and habit and then we'll talk about the food afterwards and why do women pre post any stage of menopause why do they put on weight is it the hrt what's happening no it's not the hrt it definitely isn't that it'll be partly it's a lot of things but one of the main things is the sleep deprivation so if you're not sleeping properly your gro human growth hormone isn't working properly it is also a hormone, so that isn't probably working anyway. Your serotonin isn't working right. Your melatonin, nothing's working right. <laughs> and your body then stresses because you're not getting enough sleep. And then when you stress, you gain weight around your middle section. Now, this goes back to when we were prehistoric and we needed stress. You need some stress. You need cortisol in your body to run away from any danger, tigers, things like that. Um, and so that's where, where they gain weight around the middle so that your liver can get quickly to the fat cells to get the energy out straight into your liver, change it into energy. And that's why we gain it, especially around the middle. So what is your general advice then to, to not gain? Is it just do Pilates once a week? Is it just to cut down on the sugary foods? Is it to go for a walk, you know, and just try and improve your stress that way? What, what That's do you think a good, is... All those three things would be great. Definitely stress, um, sugar management is a big one. So um, first of all, again, you've got to, you, you look at your client and you, you, you know where they're starting at. So you might have someone who goes, well, I don't eat any sugar. But you know what? Rice is high and it can really spike your insulin. So, you know, looking at that kind of element of it. But my first bit would always be go out for a walk. 
Yeah. Go out for a walk. Do it for 20 minutes every single day, even if it's pouring with rain, get a coat on. Just go for a walk because that rhythmical movement of the body helps to calm the mind, the body. We then calm our whole system. The insulin will start to work better anyway because you're moving. And then the second thing would be to um, look at the sugar levels. Um, and the third thing to me, definitely get start carrying, do lifting some weights and find a professional to help you with that. Because you know what, if you start adding weights to your hands and legs and things like that, and you just do it yourself, you are prone more to injury. So make sure you get someone professionally to help you to show you how to lift weights. But those are the three things really. Go for a walk, look at the sugar levels in your body. Again, you might need a professional like me and Jodie. Jodie's very uh, good at that, the, the insulin. Uh, management and then you know also lifting weights is the big one so those are my three tips and just to switch that around onto the person that maybe is receiving all that stress so for the husbands out there for the children of these menopausal women what can <laughs> they do to help the menopausal woman move out no i'm only joking <laughs> Don't move out. Because women do feel like they want to be alone more. You might yes. find that in your partner. There's a bit, there's a, an element of withdrawal. So, you know, be empathic, be understanding, understand it, learn, listen. You know, if you know and you listen, I'm sure your wife has been lovely to you over the years. This is time just to give back a little bit and give her, you know, give her a break, you know. Um, and don't, you know, if she does snap at you, just go, is that menopausal woman i might snap back at you even more if you say that but just know it in your mind uh, and give her a bit of space and time that's what she wants oh susan you've been amazing that's what more advice could you possibly need fantastic oh i can talk all day if you want me to i'm very passionate about this because like i say those two things there's quite a few things that people are misunderstanding and i love to kind of help people to understand it. So yeah, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So if people want more information about you and what you do, where can they find you? So I'm a livepilates.co.uk on my website. Um, I have an online program just for peri to postmenopausal women, um, fitness and health and wellbeing. Um, we, I also run day retreats as well, where we focus in on one of those sort of symptoms um, they're held in South Derbyshire, so they're, that's called notathomeescapes.com. You can find me on Instagram, Alive Pilates Susan. I'm on TikTok and I'm called Supermarket Sue on there because I'm taking you around the supermarket, showing you what to eat. Um, this is what my favourite thing of yours. Love that. <laughs> yeah, so there's lots of videos on there to have a, get some education from there. I'm on YouTube, there's lots of videos on there of lots of tips and tricks about weight loss. So my aim is obviously ladies want to lose weight and I have lots of experience in that so weight loss strength and stretching and stress management are my uh, sort of focus areas oh and pelvic floor we're not even do you know what we need to do a whole new podcast on pelvic floor Jodie it's a whole another I think one. that should be a demo video though shouldn't it <laughs> okay, okay that's fine <laughs> right thank yeah. you so much Susie it's been a pleasure we'll see you again next time thank you bye Jodie bye bye <laughs>
you know, don't worry about muscle being heavier than fat. You know, you're more important at this point to look toned and strong so that throughout your life, your bones and your joints are strong for the rest of your life.